city had in the past never attracted me much. It was my home, of course, and I knew it intimately, perhaps too intimately. In my early days, I had known its seamy side, and later on more of its graces, but it had always seemed to me a little dull and smug compared with the romantic gaiety of Paris or the sharp vitality of New York. And now suddenly, in my early 40s, I began to see it for the first time as somewhere I belonged. This sentimental revelation was made clearer to me by the fact that I was staying in a London hotel for the first time in my life. It was a strange sensation to step out of the comfortable impersonality of the Savoy and into the personal, familiar streets of my childhood. I felt a sudden urge to visit the Tower and the Abbey and Madame Tussauds and to go to the zoo. The move from Gerald Road to the Strand had turned me into a tourist in my own home. <laughs> such, it seemed more happy and genuinely gay to me than it ever had hitherto. I'm not sure that that particular quality of gaiety survived the war. The rigors of peace and post-war party politics have done much to dim its glow, but in 1941, the real lights of London shone through the blackouts with a steady brilliance that I shall never forget. They're out of sorts and suddenly and terribly crossed and get. They're Tunbridge Wells can hear the yells of whooping on bourgeoisie while begging 